What up, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter? What are you doing? What are you doing? All right, anyway. Shoot. All right, so. Oh, get me above here. So yeah, so I had a nightmare last night, and uh, it's because I was watching something, and uh, right before I went to sleep, it wasn't a scary movie or nothing, but I guess it's something I, I shouldn't have been watching, and um, so I think this is why I had this nightmare, but it was about hell. I haven't had a dream about hell in a long time, and I used to have them all the time. But uh, I do thank God that he's still sending me warnings, like, do not do these things. Because, you know, the word is not written down just to be laughed at. It says God will not be mocked. And God means that. This is why so many people go to hell, because they think, because you can't see God, he isn't there. Well, the problem is, God is everywhere, you know. So if you're not trying to live according to the word, then... You're going to get, you're going to get in trouble, but God is a most merciful God, so he warns you all the time. He's been warning me all my life, don't do these things, don't do this. You know, some things we fall into, you know, uh, it's not by accident because we want to do them, but that's what the war is. The spirit wars against the flesh and the flesh wars against the spirit. I mean, you know, I was recently into some things that uh, I, I didn't want to let go. But I kept praying, like, God help me out because I need to let this go. Anyway, I talked about it in one of my other videos. And, you know, so God uh, helped me out with that a lot because I really, really, really was, it was over my head, you know. It was too much for me, and, and I kept admitting to myself, I, I, I've never been here before. So it's not somewhere I want to go back to, but nonetheless, you know, it happened. But anyways, my nightmare had a few different moving parts to it, but the main part that I remember, and I pretty much wanted to talk to you guys about. So, okay, there was a group of people, small group of us, and uh, we went into um, we went into hell, and we went, and when we went into hell, uh, we were at it wasn't a gate. But it was where you weren't burning. And it was the warning place, I'm going to call it. And so we were talking to a being. We didn't know what he was, but he looked human. But we knew he wasn't human. Uh, but nonetheless, he looked human. He was talking to us. He was telling us. Uh, and, and here's the thing about this individual. He was telling, he was like a guide but he was uh he wasn't the devil he was probably more angelic but he didn't look angelic he was a warning probably the holy ghost but nonetheless he he was he looked like a man but he was a warning for us and the thing about it is he kept he he let us know that he has been with us like during our day during our regular day he's like i'm always around you so this is why i'm thinking he's the holy ghost because hell had no effect on him and he could travel from day, from like, he, he was basically telling us he's an inanimate object. He could be an inanimate object or he could look like this. So I think it was the Holy Ghost. And he was like, let me show you something. And uh, we were just standing there. And then these people started popping up out of the ground. And you can tell they were in in pain but when they popped up out of the ground they weren't in pain and they because they were in it was kind of like a it was it was a place right before you go into hell but it was it you knew there was there was right below your feet there were billions of people suffering you knew they were there you could hear them you could hear the screams and all that you knew that it was right there, but you couldn't feel anything, but you could hear them. So you were scared, but he, the, 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 the calm of this being standing in front of you didn't make you go hysterical. He, You knew it was a class. It was, I'm telling you this because this is not, not where you want to be. And just in case you don't believe me, I'm going to bring some witnesses. 
so these people popped up out of the ground and we were looking like, you know, Adam, and it was three of them. And they were all men. And they started talking to us. And I think the reason why they were not in pain when they were talking to us is because the pain of hell, you, you, you wouldn't be able to have a, you know, a decent conversation. It's just ridiculous of what's going on down there. Fire, worms, demons, you know, uh, bugs and all kind of stuff. Just eat every diseases, everything, everything times a billion trillion down there meant to just tear you apart forever and ever, ever. One second is way too much time there. And just imagine Jesus spent three days there just to save your ratchet soul. So nonetheless, so they came out of the ground. And when they came out of the ground, it was like they were miniature and then they grew to human size. And they were standing there looking at us and they were naked. Uh, but you couldn't really see anything on them, but you knew they were naked. And you were just looking at them in astonishment, like, wow, did this just really happen? And then they started telling us about it. They were telling us, this is not where you want to be. Do not come here. Uh, like, there's no way out of here. It's it's the worst thing you ever want to imagine. And they were pretty much saying who they were. Uh, they talked about who they were on earth and what they did with their time, but it was a very quick conversation because we were interrupted by a demon. And what happened was the ground itself came up and this demon tried to come through the ground and all you could see was his face and he said something in another language and the people translated what he said. And it was like, and we were like, what did he say? He said, they're letting them go. So this demon was chasing these people who thought that this spiritual being was letting these people out of hell. And when they and when this demon showed up, I mean, we were in shock because he was all black and red. And he was, ah, and he said whatever he said in his language. And then he went back into the ground. He's, you know, he said, they're letting them go. And he went back into the ground. And and then the, the three guys were in horror and they was like they were like we're going back into hell and we were thinking why would you go back there and they said because this demon will torture you even more if you don't go back to where you belong and i'll tell you what i'm, I'm like there's like i'm convinced that hell is real there's nothing there's there is not one thing out there that can convince me that that dream wasn't real. And I've had several of them, and I'm telling you, there is nothing. And these people, they looked at us, and they were in complete fear of this being. They feared this being. And they went back into a fiery furnace just so this being would not get to them. They jumped, jumped, I mean, and we followed them right until he jumped, this one being jumped into molten lava and disappeared. He looked at me and he was in, and he, he was like, this being, man, you like, you don't want this, like this dude to torture you even more. And he jumped back into the ground and disappeared. And they went back to a burning fire, raving fire to scream and holler, but they did not want it with this demon. Not one Bit. And when I say that all three of them jumped back in the fire, all three of those people jumped right back in the fire where they came from. It was like, like the fire is burning and all consuming and you, like there's no reprieve there. Like you're burning and screaming and you're on fire forever, but you still, there, like there's a worse than that. Like, ugh. It gets worse than that. He's like, this demon will torture you, and it is even worse. And the thing about it was the demon was following him. He knew. He knew that there were three people missing. He was following them, and he followed them to where we were. So the Holy Ghost being, or whatever it was, I think it was a Holy Ghost, by the way, you know, he was explaining how he goes from one place to another. 
the Holy Ghost being, you know, stayed calm. He saw everything that happened, and he saw me follow the guy and was talking to the guy. And he was the, the one last guy before he jumped in, and he kept warning. He's like, don't, don't come here. I'm telling you now, do not come here. This is not where you want to be. And he was so adamant about talking to me. He was so... Because he knew I was really, really interested. Like, what do I tell the people when I get back? And I think that's the thing. The people from hell can't come out and tell you what hell is like. So what happens is the Holy Ghost takes you to them. And you're thinking it's just a dream. Let me tell you something. That's not just a dream. Not, and you keep having the same dreams about the same place. This is not a joke. This is not a dream. This that's not what this is. This is the one this is the one truth that you better not even pretend to play with. And I'm gonna tell you something else. For those of you who don't believe that hell is real, ask God. This is the one thing God will not even hesitate to show you. And I'm telling you, because there's a lot of people that think the valley of Gehenna, Gehenna was hell or is hell, which is outside of Israel where they used to burn the garbage and the garbage constantly burned. They think the valley of Gehenna is hell. That is not hell. There are some other places where there are fuels that constantly burn and they never go out and it's in the ground. That is not hell. There is more than fire in hell. And I've been there several times. That is not hell. And it proves that hell is inescapable unless a holy being gets you out of there. And what happens is what's happening is these holy beings are taking you to where you can't go and come out of. But they can. Because the Holy Spirit can go anywhere. So holy Spirit angels, they can go where God wants them to go. So the Holy Spirit will take your spirit, just like when Jesus called to the little girl and, and told her to, you know, he said she's not asleep, uh, which means she's not dead. Sleep and death is different to God. And he said, uh, she's not dead, she's asleep. We think when our body dies that we're dead. God says you're just asleep, meaning your spirit travels somewhere. So what happens is when your spirit travels somewhere, just like when you're asleep, God can take your spirit and guide you to somewhere, sometimes different planets, sometimes looking at yourself in a hospital room it happens all the time. A lot of times, sometimes he'll take you to heaven and say, this, this is all yours. You know, you can run free and do whatever you want when you get here and take you to hell. This is not where you want to go. I've been to heaven too. So it's not like I've just been to hell. God has shown me heaven and I'll never forget what I saw. It was just, it was unexplanatory, <laughs> the detail of heaven. It was ridiculous, but it was so beautiful. Uh, but nonetheless, so at the end of the trip, after they jumped back into the fire, it just, they jumped into molt and lava. They jumped into a pile of lava, red and black. They jumped into it. When they jumped into the lava, the being that was the Holy Ghost, uh, pretty much was escorting us out. It was like, it's time for you to go. It was like going into a building. He escorted us out. And then I looked at him and I was like, well, who are you? And he looked at me and he's like, you don't know who I am? And I was like, no, I don't. And then he said, look at me. <laughs> so I started looking at him and I kind of touched him and he turned into an inanimate object. He turned into like a box or something. And it was something in my house. And uh, then, uh, you know, there was another being with him that said something to him, and it rang like, oh, I re and I was like, oh, I remember that, and we all started laughing. He's basically saying that I'm with you all the time. You know, I'm always around you. I'm always watching you. I am always with you. And the reason why I had this dream is because I was doing something yesterday that I should know, and he saw it. And he was like, okay, well, since this is what you want to do, maybe I need to refresh your memory on where this is going to take you when you die. So, it well, when you fall asleep, then you're going to die because the soul that sent us will surely die. So after that, we all walked out. Then we walked into, I guess it was like a building. And then we walked out of the building, jumped into, um, jumped into we all jumped into the same, same vehicle and we rode off just kind of just discussing what we just saw and how casually we can go from earth 
into hell like it's not even a thing. It's not like you have this long way to travel. It's, it's just like that. So I wanted to warn you guys who watch my videos, look, we all have sin and come short. You know, we're all doing something we shouldn't do. We done gotten fights, told people off, watch porn. Uh, <laughs> you know, decided we didn't want to go to work when we we're supposed to, or, you know, we don't want to pray, we don't want to talk to God, or whatever it is. We, we have all kinds of issues. But I'm telling you right now that there is a God in heaven, and you can always talk to him. That's my point. You don't have to ignore God because God knows you're having a hard time. I just went through a very, 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 very hard time in my life. and I'm still going through part of it. But the whole time I was going through that, I was praying about it. And I was thanking God that I was going through it. I was like, thank you. Because it could have been worse. Could have been worse. When I tell you God loves you, I'm not saying that just to end my videos. Like, I'm telling you that because hell is real. And all you need to do is just talk. Start talking to him. Like, Lord, I don't even know if you're real. I don't know if, you know, the church, I know the church is upside down. I know everything is crazy. But if you're there, I need a little love. You know, shine a little bit of love over here. And I'm telling you, God will be like, yo, what's cracking? <laughs> he might say those words to you. Because if that's the way you talk to him, and that's what you understand, then he'll do what it takes to save your soul. It's your boy Tone 202. Hell is real. God loves you.